Okay, so now we give the floor to Dr. Shini Somara. She's a science and tech TV reporter. Her Royal Highness, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express huge thanks to Razit and the Maltese government for recognizing this important day for women and girls in science by bringing us together. Thank you so much. I also want to express a heartfelt thanks to Her Royal Highness Princess Dr. Nizreen El Hashemite for my invitation to this conference. Her great efforts in pushing this resolution forward have been truly inspiring, and from what has already been presented here today, it's clear that this resolution is already starting to have an impact, so thank you. My name is Dr. Shini Somara, and I studied mechanical engineering and completed a doctorate in computational fluid dynamics. But over the past decade, I've traveled the world reporting on groundbreaking science, technology, and engineering for television. Some of the most innovative solutions that I've covered address challenges highlighted by the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, including climate change, affordable and clean energy, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, to name but a few. STEM researchers around the world play a significant part in developing solutions to these SDGs, and 30% of them are women. One in five countries have an excellent balance or even a slight over-representation of women in STEM, including countries like Argentina, Latvia, and Bulgaria, which we heard about today. Global averages can be improved, but on the whole, these statistics I find encouraging. When I was an undergraduate mechanical engineer over a decade ago, only 6% of my class were women. It was a very male-dominated environment for no obvious or valid reasons. Neurological studies have identified differences between the brains of men and women, but no scientific research has ever proved that women and girls are less capable of doing science. If this fact were to be truly embraced across cultures, then global misconceptions about the roles of women in science could be dispelled. Mechanical engineering was both tough and competitive, as are most STEM subjects. But looking back, the biggest challenge I faced during my education was not my ability to succeed, but my own perception of my ability to succeed. As with most teenage girls, self-doubt and insecurity are necessary when establishing our own identities. But left unguided and unsupported, these uncertainties can escalate to levels which negatively impact girls' commitment to the sciences. A study carried out in a school in the UK last year revealed this temperamental switch in attitudes towards maths and science during this critical age range. At 11 years old, science and maths were their favorite subjects, but by the age of 14, it was their least favorite subjects, with 70% of the girls surveyed claiming it was too difficult. In the UK, 14 is the age at which students choose to go down either the arts route or the science route. This may explain why only 25% of STEM graduates in 2015 and 16 in Britain were female. That equates to 22,000 female STEM graduates versus 65,000 male graduates each year for the past two years. On a positive note, another study of 500 children across the US under the age of 10 revealed that 41% of girls wish to go into STEM careers versus 39% of boys. And the top choice of a STEM career was to become a doctor. Children want to become what they see. Before they become too self-conscious, they approach the world with curiosity, imagination, and courage, all highly useful character traits for a career in science. This inquisitiveness must be nurtured and encouraged during and beyond adolescence. Now, perhaps this could be done through educational systems, but it can certainly be achieved through media. 
Girls' career choices in science can be reinforced by providing real-life role models of those who have trodden the science path before them. Here's an example. Patricia Nkudze is unique. She's the only woman in the world who's qualified to work on airplane engines like this. She's also Ghana's only civilian female pilot. And most importantly, she's a trained health educator. I saw the planes in the bush flying overhead whilst I was cutting my trees. And I was scared to start with, but at the same time, I wanted to see what was going on. I just wanted to be around the planes and look at them. And then suddenly I fell into love with the whole idea of becoming a pilot. Patricia was trained at an airfield on the shores of Lake Volta in Ghana. Medicine on the Move is a unique project which aims to use small planes to deliver health education to remote communities. Women like Patricia are crucial to challenging science stereotypes and redefining outdated beliefs. Media provides us with an insight into how work is contributing to the prosperity of others by seeing work like Patricia's, and it's really inspiring. An effective role model must be authentic and transparent and able to communicate their genuine passion and enthusiasm for science. This may explain why Neil deGrasse Tyson, a male astrophysicist, has about 6.6 .6 million Twitter followers. But where is his female equivalent? For television, I've interviewed many empowered women at all levels, and the next slide um, in my presentation shows those women that I've met through my work. And the work that I've seen of theirs, that we filmed, has been truly remarkable. But of these women, the ones that have left a lasting impression are the ones who tell their stories from their hearts, where they're just being themselves. The role model, the role of media could also be used to attract girls into science rather than a promotional tool. Enrollment in primary education in developing countries has reached 91% now, so girls have the best ever opportunities to get a science education. But media can provide the support, encouragement, and inspiration needed to stay in the sciences. Those 30% of women across the globe who exist in STEM research need to come forward and be seen and be heard. Not for the accolades and praise, although well-deserved, but to actually demonstrate the crucial contributions they're making in science today. By shamelessly sharing their experience of being human, Women in science will provide the strength and hope younger generations will need to break through their own personal limitations, as well as the limitations of tradition, hopefully closing the gap in science parity, which has no scientific reason for being there in the first place. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Samara, and thank you for bringing up the uh, issue of perception. Perception is, is so important because we act upon our perceptions and so these perceptions become reality. Mm -hmm. So really we can't ignore our perceptions and, and it is, as Dr. Samara said, our perceptions of ourselves, our perceptions of others, and, and they actually then beca become reality because that is what we act upon.